no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. It's mailbag time. You're watching the Raiders Sport. Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports, ready to answer all y'all's questions. If you're wondering, wait a minute, how can I get my questions on the Raiders Sport? Join us every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. This first one's coming in from Temps DG. What happens with Lawson if Nate Hobbs plays well the first three games? I'd get rid of him. Like, to, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I'd get rid of Nevin Lawson right now. The fact that he's suspended those first two games, the fact that he's taking steroids and he's still as bad as he is, why are we going to keep him around the team? Like Gruden all the time preaches, we want the right guys in the locker room. We want this, we want that, and yet you're going to keep around Nevin Lawson? I think that's shameful. If he was a good player, it's different. He's not very good. So that's where that really kind of comes into play here. But we'll see uh, what happens. And, oh, boy, we just crossed $100 in Super Chat. So, after this mailbag, i got to drink a beer out of my shoe. Let's go to Lyndon Smith. <clears throat> Mitch, he had, like, five dudes spit in that shoe also. Better hope you don't hit the goal. You said you would do the same thing. I mean, we hit $100 in Super Chat. So, I'll make you guys a deal. If we get to $150 in Super Chats... I'm going to make Jeremy drink a beer out of my shoe. So we're at 132. We need 18 more dollars, and Jeremy's going to have to come in here then also and drink a beer out of my shoe. All right, we got uh, Josh. You're up next. I missed the beginning. Do you think Adams is a legit target? I do because Derek wants him on this team, and if Derek wants him on the team, then guess what? There's going to be a lot of people going out and after him. Now, it's also going to come down to money, dollars and cents, and if Adams doesn't have the year that he wants and if you know Aaron Rodgers isn't on that team, then yeah. And if you're a team that's really trying to keep Derek Carr happy, why not go out and get his best friend? Why not try to go out and get one of the top receivers? But overall, I'd still probably give it only one Chucky head. All right, Daniel, drink, drink, drink. Oh, it's actually a shot. So I owe you all a fireball shot. So every single $20 Super Chat is a fireball shot. And then coming up here after this mailbag, I'm going to go ahead and drink a beer out of my shoe. Oh, God, that's really full. It's been a while since I poured a shot, apparently, on the Raiders report. <clears throat> and we are at 150. That's what I like to see. All right, we got a Lord Abyss. Did you see the interview with Collinsworth and DC? Yes, I did. From what I took away from it, Derek's really excited about Darren Waller. He also hyped up Zay Jones a lot. He did mention Brian Edwards at least one time, but also the whole mother effer thing. I talk about it a little bit more in depth, uh, I believe, last week. But, yes, yes, I did see it. All right, Marvin Rice. Vinny B said that if Kuhn struggles, the Raiders could sign Melvin Ingram. How many Chucky heads? I mean, <clears throat> I'll always say this about, you know, Vincent Bonsignor. Take him with a grain of salt. I mean, there's a lot of other halfway decent beat writers. Not that he's he's below average, but that's just my personal opinion. In terms of Kuhn's, he might struggle. I mean, he's been unhealthy. But Melvin Ingram... I don't understand why all this Melvin Ingram talk is around. I mean, the biggest reason why he's still out there is because he's just not getting the money that he wants. If you want an edge rusher, go get Justin Houston. He's been a lot more healthy, and he's been a lot more productive. I get that Ingram's been in this system before, but Houston would be able to do the exact same thing Ingram would be, maybe even a little bit better. So let me all know. Let me all know. Uh, let me know who will be the Raiders' fourth best defensive end because obviously Crosby, Klee, Gakwe, those are your top three, but we are still trying to figure out who's going to be that fifth guy. Is it going to be Carl Nassib? Is it going to be somebody Koontz? Is it going to be a free agent that we bring in? Who is going to be that fourth best defensive end on the Las Vegas Raiders? Oh boy, go Raiders. Will our secondary be healthy all season? I sure hope so. One of the things that the Raiders have been able to do, and you also sent in drink up, laugh out loud. So I'm just going to take two shots. Give me a sec here. <clears throat> Sam, you're going to take one? Sam's going to take one. Let's go. Let's get it popping. In terms of the secondary being healthy, I do think that the secondary is going to be a lot better, but it's also because we have a lot more depth. One of the things that the Raiders did this entire offseason, they were like, we need depth, we need depth, we need depth. And it's understandable, right? They were as bad as what they were last season with all the COVID issues that they've had. It's why the Raiders put such a big importance on going out and getting these COVID shots and really being able to take care of that defense. But, yes, I'm hoping that we are a little bit more healthy. So we had Lorenzo Nortenia, two, two shots of fireball. Cheers to you, man. Appreciate you guys watching the show. Sam left work early yesterday because he had a belly ache, and now he's taking shots on the Raiders report. All right, he's, he literally either shit or puked his pants on the second floor bathroom here at, 
at Chat Sports Studios. But, hey, if we don't get to your question because we get too drunk or whatever we end up doing, chugging beers out of our shoe, you can always go ahead and hit me up on Instagram, at MitchellRents365. Be more than happy to uh, answer your questions. We got Jack Kenna. Drink a beer out of your... Out of one of Graphic's old dirty shoes. <laughs> uh, I know Graph always says wipe them feet, so I ain't drinking no beer out of Graph's shoes. But, yes, I will be drinking a beer after this live, sh uh, after this mailbag on the live Raiders report. So, if you want to screen record it, please go ahead and do it. Tag me on Instagram. I want to share it. All right, we got Jordan. Mitch, wear a Raider shirt that says Las Vegas. Mm. See, I don't, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if I have a shirt, honestly, that says it. And, I mean, I, I usually only wear shirts of my sponsors, but I usually just keep it simple because I know there's some people that don't like the fact that it's Las Vegas Raiders, and I don't really want to try to upset anyone, so I'm just going to wear a normal Raiders shirt. What up, B? Who is going to make the biggest impact in the linebacker group this year? It needs to be Corey Littleton because he needs to be able to play like the amount of money that we're giving him. However, I'm going to go ahead and say it's Nick Wachowski. He's going to be that middle linebacker. He's going to wear the green dot on the back of his helmet. He's going to be that quarterback, if you will. And he can blitz. He can cover. He can do so many different things. I mean, I know there's a lot of Bears fans out right now that are kicking themselves in the you-know-what because they weren't able to get their hands on, or they didn't keep Kukowski. They decided to keep some other schmuck. So, yeah, I'm going to go with quit. So if you guys can, use hashtag Raiders or go ahead and super chat, get your questions or your comments here on the show. So we got YD223. Most competitive spot right now is edge rusher. So you're saying the most com uh, competitive spot is at the edge rushing position. I'm actually probably going to disagree because it's set in stone as far as I'm concerned, everyone that I talk to, that it's Crosby and Gakwe. Those are your top two edge rushers. In terms of competitiveness, I mean, defensive tackle I would actually rate more competitive than edge rusher. Linebacker because you got Darren Lee, Javen White, <clears throat> Tanner Muse. You can also sprinkle in uh, Divine Diablo. Linebacker is really competitive. Cornerback as well. I actually think defensive ends might be the least competitive position right now on the defensive side of the football. So Jeremy, he's just telling me right now that he said no for a $100 super chat that he would come on and drink a beer. So here's what I'm going to say. When I said that, we were at $72. If we can get to $200 in super chats, we're at $159 right now. Then Jeremy's got to come on the show, and he's going to drink a beer out of my nasty-ass shoe. But I'm doing it first. So since Jeremy's going to be like that, we got to get another $40 in Super Chats, and then Jeremy's also got to drink a beer out of my shoe. All right, we got a question coming in here from Jason Monroe. Would you start John Brown or Willie Steed over Hunter Renfro? I wouldn't. And Renfro is one of those players where you watch him. He's not going to light up the combine. He's not going to do a lot of things. But he is such a smart freaking player and knows exactly what Derek Carr is thinking. He gets in those hard-to-reach spots. He goes exactly to the first down marker. He does all of the right things. So why would I try to fix something if it's not broken? 49 grabs as a rookie, 56 grabs as a sophomore. If he can be around that mark, pick up 30, 32 first downs like he did his first two years, it's exactly what I need out of Renfro. If you guys are looking for Raiders analysis, news, rumors, free videos the entire offseason, go ahead and subscribe. But if you all think what we're doing right now is cool, wait until the regular season because once the regular season starts, man, we can do crazy, crazy shows every single day. It's going to be a lot of fun. But what I want you to do, look underneath the video right now, click that subscribe button. It takes less than two seconds. It helps me out a ton. It's how I pay my bills. It's how I pay. Literally everything I do is this YouTube channel. So if you support me, it helps me out a lot. I'd appreciate it. And it's how I can kind of keep this show for free. So again, y'all, use hashtag Raiders or... You can go ahead and super chat to get your questions on the show. We got 562 people watching live right now. Got a super chat coming in from Lord Abyss. Quick, who would you have for an all Madden style team, but with nothing but Raiders from past and current roster? All players are healthy. Well, I'll be honest. I don't play Madden, so if I'm going to go with any quarterback, if I can literally have any QB in their prime, I'll take Rich Gannon, running back Bo Jackson. Tim Brown, Cliff Branch is my wide receivers. I'm not going to put Jerry Rice because Jerry Rice as a Raider wasn't what Jerry Rice was as a 49er. Tight end, some people might hate me. I'm still going to go with Darren Waller, and I think that's how Madden works, right? So fingers up, or thumbs up. All right, Oscar, what's up, my man? I'm worried about Koontz and Divine Diablo. Who worries you more? It's a good question. Both players we haven't seen yet, at least we didn't during OTAs and at training camp. Both guys could kind of start on the injured list in terms of 
They have an undisclosed injury, and John is, I love Gruden, but he is such a pain in the ass when it comes to letting know, letting the media know what's happening with his players, especially if there's an injury involved. But in terms of who am I worried about more, it's a good question. So before I give you my answer, I'm going to ask you all, type MK for Malcolm Kuntz or type double Ds for Divine Diablo. Usually, any opportunity I get, I'm going to go ahead and type double D. I am worried about Kuntz, though, simply because Ed Rusher is a major need for this Las Vegas Raiders team. But the fact that this team went out and signed Darren Lee, they also have Javen White. They have Tanner Muse there as well, who they're committed to. I'm actually going to go ahead and type double D, but I am also worried about Kuntz. <clears throat> All right, we got Jimmy FX. What would Carr have to do to be considered elite? Make the playoffs. Like I actually think that's all it takes because if you have find a quarterback <clears throat> who's going to throw for over 4,000 yards, that has a completion percentage that he does, that has over 30 touchdowns, and then has less than 10 interceptions, that's pretty damn good to me. And if everybody out there wants to rip on the Raiders receiving core, okay, you can go ahead and do that. But Carr is able to raise the level of a lot of players. I mean, look at Aguilar. It's the perfect example of that. So, like, he needs to make the playoffs. And not only that, he needs to win a playoff game because – even though I hate saying quarterback wins is important, it does matter to a certain degree. So he needs to go ahead, make the playoffs, win some games. All right, Armin, if you had the first pick in fantasy football, who would you pick? <clears throat> I'm probably going to go with Christian McCaffrey. PPR league, it's easily McCaffrey for me. If you're in a two-quarterback league, I'd go with Patrick Mahomes. If you are in a standard league, I might even shift then to Derrick Henry. But there's a lot of a uh, lot of options, honestly. My favorite pick on, in terms of being a sleeper pick for this upcoming season, I actually think Darren Waller is one of the most disrespected players in fantasy because everyone goes after Kittle, everyone goes after Kelsey. Waller is a very important player who you can get at the tight end position in the second, sometimes even the third round. What up, Dale? Do you think that it was a good idea to bring back Carl Joseph? I do. And the reason why I like it now, when, the, when it first happened, I was like, man, I don't really understand it. I don't really like it. But Joseph wanted to be a Raider. The fact that he was so good with Gruden back in 2019. But not only that, it gives us a little bit of an insurance policy on Jonathan Abram, where if Abram doesn't get the job done, you can then bring in Carl Joseph, who is a less athletic version of Abram. He can cover better, but is a less athletic version. Put him up as a box safety, put him up near the line of scrimmage, and let him do his thing. So I like it a little bit more now, and it gives us a little bit more insurance for, for Jonathan Abram. All right, y'all, so if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate y'all very much. And I know this is July. Some people are like, oh, Mitch, like I want to talk about certain things. So how about this? I want you guys to give me a cool idea for a Raiders report show because we're just getting to that point of the year where I'm like, man, what the hell am I going to talk about on today's show? So if you could, go down in the comments. I'll be looking. Give me a cool idea for the Raiders report. If you haven't already, please show the show a little bit of love. And the way that you can do that is by downloading the Newsbreak app. So how do you do that? You go to chatsports.com slash RaidersNB. So what I want you to do, get out your iPhone, get out your Android, go to chatsports.com slash RaidersNB. If you can't remember it, that link is in the chat. It's also in the description. It's in the comments section below. Why would you go ahead and do that? Not only are you helping me out a lot, you're also going to be able to stay up to date on local news, local weather in your area. So it doesn't matter if you live in Vegas, Oakland, Los Angeles. It doesn't matter if you live in my hometown, Danville, Pennsylvania. Shout out to the 570. It doesn't matter what your zip code is. This app is useful for you. If you need politics, food, pop culture, sports content, exclusive Raiders reports videos that aren't on YouTube, go to chatsports.com slash RaidersNB. Download the free app and then go ahead in the top right-hand screen or top hand top right hand corner of your mobile device click that magnifying glass search Raiders report give us a follow I'd really appreciate it let's go to Jonathan what up my man who's the best free agent pickup and why is it Nathan Peterman definitely not Nathan Peterman if you were to ask me who's the best best one this offseason <clears throat> oh man that's a good question it's a I you know what? I'm actually gonna go the best free agent pickup the Raiders have had since Gruden has taken over is Nick Kwiatkowski because Kwiatkowski has really been able to do a lot of different things on defense. I want to be able to say it's Gakwe, but I have yet to see what Gakwe is going to be able to bring. Now that I say that, I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass for not going with Gakwe. But either that, or I might even go with Casey Hayward, another really solid pickup. Let's go with Juan Hernandez. How much would it take for us to get Malik Hooker? 
I mean, anytime you're looking to know how much it gets a hooker, I mean, I, I don't know if that's the right question to ask. I actually think you can get him pretty cheap because he's gone to a few different teams. All those teams have been not too, Im not, I don't want to say not impressed, but the medical on him is scaring the hell out of people. Towards Achilles last year, played in only two games. When he's healthy, he's dynamic. The issue is he's missed 28 games, 28 games in four years. Not many people are going to take a chance on him, at least at this point. But if he wants to sign a cheap one-year prove-it deal, let's go for it. <clears throat> My wife thinks you're cute. Throw her a shout-out. Uh, shout-out to L.I. Raider 312's wife. Thank you. Let's go to Jason Monroe. Do you ever think about how we drafted Connor Cook over Dak Prescott? Dang. I was a fan of Dak in college. Um, do I ever think about it? No. Did I ever think Connor Cook was going to be good, though? No, I actually, as soon as I made that pick, I was like, that's going to be a terrible pick. But, like, Dak, Dak, one thing that I'll give him credit for, he's a hardworking guy. He does the right things. And I know I live down here in Dallas, but I know some people that know Dak. He is a hardworking player. And anytime you're drafted in the fourth round and you got a guy like Tony Romo ahead of you and you're kind of able to beat him out, I know Romo got hurt, I'll tip my cap to him, but it's also really hard to be able to predict that kind of position. All right, next one's coming in from Shane. What will be Waller's stats this year? Great question. So we had 90 catches in 2019, 107 catches in 2020. I'm going to go kind of in the middle here. I'm going to go like 93 grabs, probably like 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. His numbers are going to come down a little bit because you're going to see the Raiders spread the love out between a few other players. All right, y'all, you are watching the Raiders report. we got 500 people watching right now, and this next question is coming in from Daniel. <clears throat> Will the show be live on Thanksgiving when we gobble the cowgirls? Oh, man, I love this one. Yes, I, me and Tom both, we will be in the studio on Thanksgiving. Don't get me wrong. I wish I could spend it with my family, but my family understands. Like I signed up for this line of work, and I can't wait to sit here on Thanksgiving and watch the Raiders whoop up on the cowgirls. But also, if you plan on coming down to Dallas for this Raiders game, hit me up on IG. I know I'm going to a bunch of different Raiders parties. I'm hoping that we might be able to tell and then come back to the studio and film but if you're in Dallas let me know because this is where I live and I want to be able to hang out with y'all all right what up Jack Mitch do the top 10 Mitch do the top 10 to Raiders teams in Raiders history oh man I mean I almost feel like I got to go with all the Super Bowl winning teams so 77 81 84 <clears throat> 2002 was a hell of a year um those are the top four 2016's probably got to be sprinkled in there as well somewhere to do the top 10 teams in that order. How about I got your top five? Uh, maybe someday I'll do it. Maybe I'll do the top 10 in a video someday. <clears throat> 